Okay. All right. So these next couple of months, you're going to be traveling. Well, you know, I've been traveling a lot. I was in Paris. I was in Dakar, Senegal. My journey will begin again in uh, Guyana in March. And then after that, I'll be going to SCAD in Savannah. July is Charleston, South Carolina. And then I just got invited to go to Ghana for a speaking engagement. And so a lot of my work has been looking at the textile making techniques of West African textiles specifically, like for example, kinte cloth from Ghana. But then I also look at the house decoration painting. This is in uh, Mauritania. In addition, there's a lot to do with hairstyles. This is a traditional Fulani woman. You don't find them specific in one country. You may find them uh, a lot, say, in Senegal, the Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, Mali. It actually kind of spoke to me spiritually that Yes, because of my love for travel and being in different places that I am Fulani in a way. Now I'm back in the studio and I'm channeling all these experiences into my new body of work. We are in an industrial area, um, so you kind of will hear all the woodworking, ironworking companies around, but my family is from the Caribbean. My mother's from a small island called St. Vincent and my father's from Jamaica. They met in the U.S., so I'm first generation born here. Because my mother was a pianist, and I was juggling between the idea of working in music and working in art, and then in 10th grade, I had to make a decision. And since the programs were being cut, it was like either you're going to be in orchestra or you're going to take art class. And so I chose art class. That is when I had taken my first art history class on African-American artists. And I learned about painters to sculptors and even textile design, which I never heard of before. And so I transferred to FIT, and I went to study textile surface design. While I was at FIT, I discovered um, rug design, and I really got into it. I mean, it helped that I won a, a rug design contest, first prize, and then that money I used, I traveled. I went, I went to Ghana. That was my first time to Africa, and I had been studying the, the art, the culture for so long, but there's a difference when you go and experience the culture for yourself. So now I get to create my own story based on what I experienced. And I mean, traditionally, when you look at a lot of works from the continent, pattern is a very important element. See, look at all this, look. When I see all this pattern and the detail, now the way I'm doing it now is more about using pattern as a language to communicate the experience of black women throughout the diaspora. And I've been photographing women and trying to figure out how do I tell their story, but in an abstract way, you know, through the carving, the way I'm creating my pattern, to ignite people to one, learn more about black culture. And then also for the people that I'm telling their story, for them to be unapologetic about who they are and the experience that they've had. So that's really the premise of my work right now. When I finished school, I worked in the carpet company. I worked for large carpet manufacturers. Of course, it was not my design aesthetic. But you know, you do you do those type of things when um, you know you're, you, the bigger picture was always to do my own business, and I was designing for hotels and private residences and you know commercial spaces. But what I realized was that my creativity had become suffocated in a way because the work I was creating was more about what those clients wanted, not about what my soul and my aesthetic was really yearning to do. I needed to take a moment to stop, exhale. I decided to hire a branding consultant to help reposition me. She says, no, you should go back to painting. And at first, I was like, painting? I went back to painting. I went back to making, and I realized how much I missed it. I realized that, you know, I want to try a new medium. I said, you know, I've been interested in clay, but I've never worked in clay before. And what I did, I went back to my first year in college the African-American art history class. And I thought about the sculptors that I admired. And Edmonia Lewis was one. She had got kicked out of Oberlin College because again, we were in a racist system, that it was live. So she left and she actually went to Pietra Santa, Italy to study marble carving. And I said, I wanna channel that path. Augusta Savage was another. And so, you know, this Augusta Savage, she was, again, another well-known black female sculptor. She didn't get her dues during the time. This is during the Harlem Renaissance, but she was a badass in her day. She created this piece called um, Lift Every Voice and Sing. It was the, uh, a harp. 
she won a scholarship to go to Paris to do a fellowship. And then once they found out that she was a black woman, they took the scholarship away. And so stories like this really helped to channel me and say, we need to continue on this legacy of making, and specifically in clay, for the people like Augusta, who you know, had those challenges and couldn't do the work that she was born to do. The artists who came before me, you know, we're just carrying on with what the work they started and just continuing. And I think that's what's happening. You have to pass the baton back to the next generation so they could move, advance the community a little further. These are some of the pieces that I created from my residency at Greenwich House Pottery. Again, they were all looking at the different house decoration techniques from Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Ghana. This is where I really started to learn about carving in clay. But prior to doing that, I'd taken some pottery classes. I, honestly, I didn't like it at first because I took slip casting and I was like, what did I just take? And the teacher saw, she said, I think you would like hand building. And I was like, okay, what's that? <laughs> Every night I was going home, I was on YouTube. I was watching videos. And I was like, oh, look at that technique. Ooh, oh, that looks like textiles. Ooh, you know, I was looking at all the different techniques that clay could create, which is so different than working in rugs. I got excited. Well, I've been working in a lot of different darker clay, so from red to a dark brown to a black clay. And all of these test tiles are experimenting in different carving techniques with, of course, different glaze finishes. And this is a black porcelain that has like some washes on it, so I do like that idea. And then this tile is on a white stoneware, but again, it has like multiple glazes on here. And then while I'm also doing pattern, I do like working with figures and portraiture. So this is a sample tile, just experimenting with relief. I'm very interested in metallic finishes because I think that when you see a metallic, it creates this mirror effect and it's about reflection. And I really want people to reflect and connect to a memory when they see my work. So all of these tests were really based on how it would finish the collection that I just um, finished as of recent and there are two different stories going on here where I am using the carving on the bottom say of the vessels and then again it's all hand built strip by strip to mimic textile making techniques. The idea that the forms are abstract that is one way of looking at it but then I created these series of faces that would be interchangeable and they would sit and once these faces were attached it gave it a different life. You really start to feel like someone is wrapped inside. You feel like there is a figure in there somehow, some way. And even the look on her face, the direction of her eyes, there's a sense of moving forward, there's hope. There's so much on her mind that you get to create the story of what she's thinking and think about what you would be thinking. And again, this is the idea of the interchanging of the the faces. Also, many different masks or faces as a black woman that we constantly are putting on, whether it's to our hair, whether it's to our physical appearance, addressing those issues as positive things and not so much of as a neg negative thing. I'm, I'm exploring this idea of being in the seat of, of, or say, the position of an artist and what that means to me. And the ultimate goal is to create a space for people who want to learn the techniques of textiles and ceramics from Africa. Because I remember when I was in school, I had to look at books. I, there wasn't like a place to go. And so I want to leave that as a part of um, my legacy. If we could embrace, just as a people, the idea of learning, forever learning. You know, I want to be able to absorb as much as I can from this time that I have here. But in addition, I also want to learn as much as I can so then I can leave a lot for others to learn too. Being confident and proud about who you are, where you are, and be able to express and share those experiences with other people and not have to apologize for it.